this is a um, it's what I call my virtual cycle trainer. It's basically a uh, it's a collection of uh, switches and um, connectors that let me take my my standard Trek bicycle and a um, a kinetic cycle trainer that's got a resistance um, generator thing on the back um, and connect it to a Arduino um, microcomputer which is then interfaced to my uh, my desktop computer through a USB connection. You can take the uh, control inputs um, which are the um, the position the uh, rotational position of the handlebars and also the um, the rotation of the rear wheel and and if I wanted to, I don't have this hooked up, but if I wanted to, I could also add the um, rotation of the pedals too uh, for like pedal cadence as part of the input. I've got it linked to this um, breadboard, um, uh, plug-in breadboard uh, with these, uh, 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 these uh, jumper wire arrangements. And I, I built all this, this extra junk myself. It's all basically off-the-shelf stuff that I got at Home Depot and at Radio Shack. So the, the, uh, like the wires, these are uh, surplus Cat5 cable. The uh, connectors are um, uh, Radio Shack RS-232, DV25, and a DV9 connector. Um, the, um, the DV25 takes all the signals from the uh, toggle switches that are up on the, the uh, control box on the handlebars. The, um, the DB9 connector takes, there's a potentiometer that's connected to um, a bolt that uh, goes through this uh, crossbar in the center of the, um, uh, the turntable here. Um, and that's coupled with a, uh, some clamps and some plastic hose to, uh, to the potentiometer that's on the, uh, underneath the base of the, uh, the turntable. I've got uh, the mating connectors. Um, on the ends of this uh, this cable assembly here, so you plug all that together, and then basically this this Arduino, it's got a, a standard um, USB peripheral connector here on the end. So you take that and you plug that into your standard USB peripheral cable, and this goes from the computer or um, uh, into the computer from the stereo. Basically, once you get that all connected, then you you boot the computer and um, and then log on. So having done all that, then you log on to the computer, and then I basically uh, start up my start up my application. So I've got Visual Studio on this computer, and um, so I I wrote some more um, C sharp code that. Uh, it takes it both takes input from the Arduino board through the USB port, and and basically what it gets is there's this the Arduino essentially takes the uh, the RPM information from the rear wheel and the toggle switch inputs, and it, it formats that and puts that all it converts it all into a legible ASCII text string that it feeds through the USB port, and that looks like a serial COM port, a virtual COM port to the PC. So. So here's my application. This is the actual program, the uh, C sharp program that runs everything. Um, so it takes the input from the Arduino board, which is there's other code that I wrote that goes in that, and that's providing uh, reading the switch inputs and the wheel and all that stuff, and then creating a little formatted string and then feeding that through the USB port. And then um, then this program on the computer, um, this basically takes that stuff and then uses that to control uh, movement through the Google Earth API. And so, so I'll start this up and you can see what it does. It starts it up and I always start it up right above South Mission Beach. So you're right above the jetty. A good choice. Looking north. Yeah. So you're at an altitude of 500 meters. You're heading north, which is zero degrees true. The camera angle is tilted um, 60 degrees up, whereas zero degrees is pointing straight down. Mm -hmm. Wheel RPM is currently zero, so we're not moving. 
and the speed multiplier is uh, one time. So if you pedal a wheel, basically your forward motion is, is you actually move at one time. So you move at like real true, you know, front front wheel speed. So we're all connected. We're hooked in. We're all set. Oh yeah. Wanna, let's let's well expand this to full screen. Ah oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, so we're now we're now basically um, hovering above South Mission Beach, and we're pointing off kind of uh, in, a, in an easterly direction. And if this works correctly, so we'll drop down a little bit here, and we'll we'll slow down a little. And oh yeah, there's the plunge. Here we'll tilt down, and you can actually see. So it's not too bad. You, you get the uh, kind of distorted flattening effect of all the other stuff. This is what I usually do. Is uh, I'll start. Uh, you can go up the beach. You can, uh, you know, you can go out by the water and and through the line. The uh, the surf. If you go at this rate with a speed multiplier of about four or so, um, that way um, the um, Google Earth has enough, enough time to, uh, to do a pretty good update on all the imagery. If you go much faster than that, if you go too fast, you start overrunning the cache, and then it takes um, a fair amount of time, a significant amount of time, for the uh, program to actually get the updates from the server and update the screen and some of the program artifacts in and blocking it. Whenever you make a turn, um, you have to give, you're giving information to the program, and you're saying, um, you know, uh, now change your direction from straight ahead. Uh, moving in a straight ahead direction requires very, very little computation. So the program is not slowed down by that at all. If you start making a turn, then the amount of compute time that's required gets significant and you actually get a perceptible delay. And it goes like your forward motion will actually perceptibly slow down. Oh, yeah. And so it, and that's more enhanced the, uh, the higher speed you got. So, um, so that's that's kind of the drag, but I, I, it's I've kind of I've mitigated that a little bit, but it's still uh, you know it's still uh, uh, you know less than optimal.